Up until, well, you still can roam the halls of the esteemed Penn Museum at the University of Pennsylvania and see the stolen skulls of former slaves on display. They were used by famous scientific racist, also known as just a racist, Samuel Morton, to justify the inferiority of black people. The Atlanta Black Star of August 28, 2022 noted, the Ivy League University has announced plans to rebury the skulls in the state's historic Eden Museum. But the visual of black skulls in museums, while white skulls remain peacefully untouched beneath the soils, recalls W.E.B. Du Bois's famous concept of the color line, which described the physical, social, and cultural barriers between black people and everybody else. But in his 2022 book, Disabilities of the Color Line, author Dr. Dennis Tyler borrows Du Bois's language to agree that yes, there are social and legal barriers that have been used to segregate and punish black people. However, he theorizes that Du Bois's color line was incomplete because he failed to explain how that line is maintained. In his new theory, Disabilities of the Color Line, Tyler provides an answer. Disability has been weaponized against black people and ensures that color line stays standing. For centuries, African Americans have been cast as intellectually unfit for freedom, contagious within the national body politic, and anatomically better suited for physical labor, making consideration of Tyler's theory worthwhile. So let's break down its concept, apply them to modern case studies, and explore implications to a theory that, might, that may argue disability isn't merely another identity to consider, it's a method of oppression against black people. Dennis Tyler's Disability of the Color Line prompts, pushes us to think about the intersection of race and disability. He argues anti-blackness manifests itself through it and points to three spheres of black life to explain his theory. Scientific, legal, and social. First, science has long been used to locate bodily differences in black people bodily differences in black people, in order to justify their inferiority. Noted 1851 physician Charles Cartwright called it drapedomania, meaning runway, a madness that was completely incurable and used to explain slaves trying to escape. Negroes with their smaller brains, blood vessels, and tendency towards laziness had to be kept in a state of submission. In other words, enslaved people were psychologically diagnosed as unfit for freedom and physically adapted for slavery. Next, African Americans have historically been cast as intellectually incapable of making decisions for the national body politic. The Brennan Center for Justice of March 13, 2022 reveals, literacy tests like those implemented after Reconstruction were applied by county clerks who gave black, doc black voters extremely difficult legal documents read, while white voters received an easy text. By 1940, black voters in the South amounted only to 3%. Literacy tests were a tool of voter suppression used to prove that we are too intellectually impaired, too disabled to vote. Finally, Dennis Tyler's theory argues that we are socially conditioned and socially view black bodies as fundamentally different. A 2019 study from the Journal of Social, Psychological, and Personality Science asked internet users who was more likely to have skin thick enough to withstand the pain of burning hot coals. Respondents chose black people, the majority at the time. This concept is the same one that informs assumptions that black men are uniquely capable of withstanding a single gunshot, necessitating extra force. This social construction relies on an inverse, of dis the inverse approach of disability, but one that nonetheless frames black men as unusually powerful, strong, and dangerous. Today's relation between disability and today's relation between blackness and disability has become even more complex, demonstrating not only its weaponization, but in casting both disability and blackness as exceedingly less than its closeness. To understand this concept, let's apply Tyler's theory to two case studies: black beauty and environmental racism. First, we are socially conditioned to view black women as not as beautiful. The uh, Forbes of August 21st, 2022 recalls last year's Oscars where Chris Rock mocked Jada Pinkett Smith's hair loss, comparing her to G.I. Jane. Chris Rock's routine overlooks Smith's alopecia, an autoimmune disease that disproportionately affects black women, but Pinkett Smith took it in stride. 
and the glamour of September 21st, 2022 reveals she later celebrated bald as beautiful play. While Smith tries to attempt to reclaim beauty, she fails to understand that beauty standards prioritize facial symmetry, specific bodily proportions, normative heights, and so on. Tyler's theory could argue that bodily beauty definitions are inextricably ableist, who are well intended, Pickett Smith's response sends an inadvertent message. She simply wants a racially inclusive form of ableism. Next, located along the lower Mississippi River, Cancer Alley is a hub to over 150 oil refineries and chemical facilities. The New York Times of September 15, 2022 reveals. Known for illicit environmental destruction, the area has posed serious health threats to the largely black communities that inhabit it. Cancer Alley it exemplifies the eco-conscious concept of environmental racism through its impact on both black and brown communities. Residents there have the highest rate of air pollution caused lung cancer, over 50 times the national average. Cancer diagnosis is the problem, the reason we want to end Cancer Alley. This case study offers a different approach of disability and blackness. Here, disability isn't just the weapon of anti-blackness, it is the justification and proof offered so that anti-blackness might end. Pseudoscientists like Samuel Morton and Jars Cartwright have, have long been disproved and debunked, but the societal ramifications of their racist and ableist rhetoric continues to permeate our view on black minds and bodies, revealing two implications, uh, prompting two implications, disability pride and the new intersectionality. First, the implementation of Dennis Thayer's theory prompts us to review the way that we examine disability pride. The Forbes of August 14, 2022 reveals disability pride is meant to, it is for embracing pride as a disability as an integral part of who you are and claiming visibility in public. But Tyler pushes us to observe that it isn't merely disability that matters, it's how those disabilities are acquired. In the case of lung cancer and the cancer alley, or the neurocognitive effects that came with the water crisis in Flint, Michigan, disability, especially for black people, can often be the result of systemically racist institutions that have been embedded in our society. For queer community, for the queer community and those like it, pride teaches us to love ourselves despite what others and the broad culture might how might treat us. But for the black community. Disability is an integral part of who we are, but how we're perceived. We have to reconcile that they may not be a source of pride for all Black people, but reminders that if we weren't so steeped in anti-Blackness, they might not actually be disabled. Finally, a new intersectionality, as Global Citizen of February 6, 2022 reveals, intersectionality acknowledges that we all have different experiences of discrimination and privilege given our identities, but what goes undiscussed is how oppression, okay, oppression can also articulate itself through them. We view the maltreatment stemming from race and disability as two separate entities, and as a result, discount the experiences felt by the people of, the color, the people of color living in the space between, and take away their ability to communicate their struggle for what it is. The subjugation to institutionalized racism through the exploitation of disabilities concept and who we believe fits into its category. In his 1903 essay, W.E.B. Du Bois suggested that the problem of the 20th century was the problem of the color line, but Dennis Tyler finishes, we can't begin to treat oppression without examining how it is fueled by issues that have always been used to conceal it. Today, we examine the theory of disabilities ties with the color line, applied it to modern case studies, and discussed implications Dennis Tyler's approach allows us to begin understanding race and disability from a perspective that addresses the faults of our society head on. How we use it to further acknowledge other forms of oppression raises a plethora of questions that we have yet to answer.